Good afternoon. A little later than normal, but um, I guess just to start, I want to want to read uh, just three verses out of Psalm 136. Just just to start. Psalm 136, verses 1 on to verse 3. Hmm. Actually, I mean, we could read this whole thing, but let's just start to keep with. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the God of little g, gods. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his mercy endureth forever. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Praise the Lord for his good. For his mercy endureth forever. And what is the very last verse in Psalm 136? Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. Verse 26. For his mercy endureth forever. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please turn with me, read along with me in your authorized version of the scriptures. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse. Please, read along with me. Um, if you haven't figured it out, okay, the reason why you need to read along, well, you need to, you should, ought to, uh, read along with me is because you need to see it for yourself, number one. Number two, I will I will make mistakes. So you'll be reading the lines like Brad, you skipped a verse, or Brad, you skipped a word, or something like that. Uh, I I do that sometimes. So read along with me. I want to talk to you today about uh, um, something that is very subtle. There are people out there, especially on YouTube and on social media platforms who do nothing but attack people and do exposing videos. Uh, you know, there's, um, there's several here in America, there's a couple in Canada, there's an idiot in England that does. All they do, all they are about is causing contention, causing strife, pointing the finger at everybody else while all the while putting on a facade of civility, of humility, when in actuality they are most likely serving the Vatican, enemies of God. But there are, there are many YouTube channels and on other platforms that do, that's all they're about. That's all they're about. They're all about exposing this person or that person or this person. Uh, and they give off this aura, as it were, that they are these holy, perfect creatures. Especially ones from England. Okay? What a pathetic existence. I know there's the one guy from New York. Elmer Fudd from New York. He, he's like exposing heretics. Exposing heretics is a great ministry. <laughs> and, and I know that guy has cancer and it, it can happen to a better person, but I, um, I, I pity him for that, for his, his ailment that is a recompense, I believe. But nonetheless, perfect example. There's the one little whippersnapper in Canada that, you know, I haven't heard from him for a long time. It, but, you know, a very vain uh, individual who all does, all he does is attack this, this, that, that, this, and the other, you know. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, from, from England and also uh, uh, other places overseas. That's all they do. That's all they do. That's all they do. And see, here in America amongst the denomination of King James Bible believing Christianity, there are those that don't necessarily center on that, 
but they take that as a means of <laughs> liberty to not expose with the angle of giving truth, but to exalt themselves. Does that make sense? You know, so you might not readily believe this, but um, I really take seriously when the Lord will have me to make people aware of something, okay, when it is appropriate, when it is me. However, these heretic devils will bring things out, bring things out in order to introduce them onto you, to turn you away from the truth. Does that make sense? Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 8. Okay. Um, to everything, there is a season. And a time to and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Hold your place. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. Verses one on verse four. Second Timothy chapter four. Verses one on verse four. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick alive and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Okay, distinction there. Preach the word, not philosophy. Not philosophy. Not religion. You know the difference? Preach the word, the authorized version. Not hyperbole. Not hermeneutics, not homiletics. What are those? Don't ask. Preach the word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, the authorized version. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. With all long suffering and doctrine. Now, see, a lot of people will point to that. It's like reprove and rebuke, but also exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Not philosophy, not feelings, not emotions, not sensationalism. And when I say to you sensationalism, I mean causing sensation for the for the sake of effect okay which a lot of these devils do for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves they after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned onto fables. Oh, and a fable, any, any kind of, anything of Christianity pretty much you can come up with uh, is a fable. God loves you unconditionally. Just believe and receive. Okay. Christians are going through the great tribulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to everything, back in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, verse 1. To everything there is a time. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. We're to be instant in season and out of season. Have you, have you figured this out that when the Lord uh, decides he's going to use a vessel such as yourself, it usually is in a context when you weren't looking for it. You know the, the old saying, a watch pot doesn't boil? <laughs> my, wife, my wife always, you know, when she's cooking dinner, she, she's like, I, can, I get out of the kitchen and, you know, go sit down because a watch pot never boils, right? <laughs> you know? 
But it's usually, usually some of the most profound moments, some of the most um, fruitful moments is, at, at least with me, and I'm, I'm sure with most of you, you've, you had to have figured this one out already. They come when you least expect it and when you're not like prepared with a whole document. I, see, this is why I always tell you, I, brother, sister, I don't care if you, and see, get yourself in the habit thereof. Okay? Always carry a sword. Always carry a sword. Okay? It's good, like, I, I know brethren, it's like, well, wherever I go, I always got a, got a sword in the car. Good. That's good. But what good is that sword going to do you when you're in the Wally world and a situation comes up and it's like... <laughs> so, get in the habit. Okay? Remember, there is no small work in the kingdom, the uh, kingdom of God. Okay? The kingdom of God, which is spiritual. We saints are not building a physical kingdom today. Rome is, okay? But there is no small infinitesimal work in the kingdom of God. Spiritual, okay? Get in the habit. I, I, do, I don't care if you're, you're walking down your driveway to put your garbage in there or to get the mail. Get yourself something like this, a pocket size or whatever. I, I don't care. Get in the habit. Put it in your pocket. Or, or, or just have it in your hand. Always have a sword on you. Always have a sword. Because action doesn't usually come when you're looking for it, but when you're not looking for it. And when you're not looking for it, there's where the metal is tested. Like I said, once, one time, my 16 years, once I was caught without a sword. Only once. Never happened again, boy. That's a mistake. And when, uh, let me tell you something, brother. Hey, 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 and again, brother, sister, you know, you got one in the car, that's that's great. That That is. That's more than most. Okay, that's, that is. It's like because, you know, if you can get them out, it's like, well, you want to go? I can show you. I got, I got it, but it's always better to have a sword on you, okay? And if you don't, you can you can get a pocket-sized one, okay? So, but get in that habit. Get in that. You know, dude, you leave your house with your your wallet, your car keys, some of you your smokes in your lighter, don't you? You leave you leave with your cell phone, don't you? A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Pluck up that which is planted. And every tree that my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Hmm. So there is a time for that. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down. Time to build up, breaking down strongholds, casting down imaginations, hmm? and a time to build up, hmm? not puff up, build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Uh, some people will come to verse 4 to justify um, dancing <laughs> and that that we can go off on that one and uh, uh, quite a ways, uh, quite a ways. Um, <laughs> male pole dancers, okay. And I have with my own eyes, with my own eyes, watched a video of Christian pole dancing. Now, see, I bring that up for an example, okay? But, see, I do not bring that up to spark your curiosity to look. 
A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Ken Helvin has uh, come to this verse, verse 15. It's like, it's like we need to, and his premise was that you need to be able to answer every question of the gainsayers or the naysayers. That is not the fact. No. No. And when you look at the, ver at the verse, okay, what does it say? And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. First Timothy chapter 1, just the very first verse. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandments of God our Savior and Jesus Christ, which is our hope. The hope that is in you, Saint, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? This does not mean that you are to answer every question. Because there are, there are people out there who will just ask you questions and upon questions, not wanting to hear or to know the truth, but just ask to be disputatious. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. And that's when you run into the juvenile playground schoolyard you can't answer because you don't know it na, 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 na. <laughs> like you know and I did that to, I did that to one time it's like oh boy you there pal you want some milk and cookies he, he didn't like that but I kind of I kind of <laughs> postured a little bit for him too you know it's like oh boy kid <laughs> hey you want some milk and cookies how about a little nap huh yeah, it's about time for recess, isn't it, little boy? Yeah. Don't, brethren, don't, and brethren, see, you gotta get, you gotta reach a point in your life, basically, to just pass over these imbeciles who resort to juvenile bullying, okay? Juvenile bullying. Like, on, on a playground. A schoolyard, and they use the exact same rhetoric, dialect as a teenager or a little kid picking on another little kid. It's the exact same thing, okay? And as a saint, <laughs> you, you, you gotta, yeah, I mean, and hey, like I've told you before, I, you know, I will be combative, I will fight back, okay? And I've done that to detriment, unfortunately. But, I mean, there, there comes a time, people, where you got to just like, okay, little, little child, okay. Bye-bye, you, you run along now and go play. You, you go right along now, okay. Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 on to verse 6. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. 
make it manifest. Look at that verse. That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. You know, sometimes some of the loudest speaking you can do is without words. You, you, you figured that one out, haven't you? Walk in wisdom, the fear of the Lord, towards them that are without, not saved, redeeming the time. You, as a saint, are an ambassador of our Lord Jesus Christ, and as you've heard me tell you time and time again, the way you serve the Lord reflects Him. And these devils are serving Satan, and it reflects Him, but they want you to believe that it's the Lord Jesus Christ. It isn't. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Right there. Grace, unmerited favor, basically. Salt, which is a preservative, but if you ever gotten salt in a wound, oh, it burns. But it cauterizes, preserves. That ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. And see, people will go to this. It's like, so see, you've got to answer every little silly question that a self-theist or a Muslim comes up or one of these devilish Christians come. No, 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 look at it. Look at that verse. Let your speech be always with grace, unmerited faith. Seasoned with salt, which burns and preserves, that ye, plural, may know how ye ought to answer every man. Ought to answer every man. You know what that means? There are some questions that don't necessitate an answer verbally or even in demonstration. There are some questions, sometimes people will ask you things where you just like, like it, it's a water off of a duck's back. It's like, what? <laughs> that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. You don't have to answer every question, dear brother. Dear sister, okay? And see, the enemy will try to entice you to speak of many things, to try to find a loophole and keep it going and going and going and going and going and going with no end and with no desire of the truth. You have to be on your guard on that and let the Lord be the one who guides you. And, you know, after a while, you, you'll you'll be able to readily discern. It's like, dude, okay, You've asked me the same question, repackaged, four times. I'm not answering you. I've answered it once. And then you repackaged it again, a little different, but yet the same base question. Okay? You, you don't want to hear the truth. No matter how your packaging it is at and throwing it at me, here's the truth. You don't want to take it? That Fine. Go, go find yourself a Bible that agrees with you. Go find you a Christian who will pacify you. Okay? A saint won't do that. Okay? All right? Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. There is a time and place for everything. And when you are in a position as a preacher, teacher, or of that kind of position or whatever, um, there will come times where out of necessity, you will be called to make known someone or to warn the people about a heretical teaching or something like that. But see, there are those out there who take pride in that. Like the guy from New York, the guy from England, the one punk from Canada, and uh, uh, many here from, uh, you know, in America and throughout this whole thing called Christianity. It's a thing of pride with them. Okay? There is a time and a place for that. Yes, that is an unfortunate thing. But see, also, too, when you're doing that, you want to try to, okay, give the antidote to the poison that they're giving you. These guys just 
give you, you know, it's like this guy, he's a hypocrite, hypocrite, hypocrite. Hey, look in the mirror, you ugly duck. Okay, I said duck. Okay, uh, all right. But I mean, th there's no level to their depravity. Okay, and they do it to number, and they can do it to gain the limelight. Okay, you know, unfortunately, the most popular video on the channel the Lord has given me is the one exposing Mark the Messenger. I did that very reluctantly, even though I did go at him vehemently because he's teaching heresy. Okay, but see, in that video, which I turned the comments off of because, you know, you can only say don't judge so many times before I'm going to vomit, wretch, and blow up on you. Okay, <laughs> and you're not even watching the whole video. But, see, that's the thing. It's a twofold. You know, if you're going to label someone as heretic, expose their false teachings and doctrines, it's a good practice to provide the antidote. Okay? All right? All right? Have I done that every single time? No. No. But see, here's the thing. I will usually, Lord willing, um, I will usually give a link in the description box to just like, hey, like I say in several videos, it's like, okay, I'm not going to address that, but there will be a link for you in the description box. And then when someone gives me an email about a topic that I didn't uh, talk about in the specific video, but it's like, dude, th there was a link for that topic. You're the one who's lazy and doesn't want to go look at it. There again, it's like, okay, go away. Okay, go away. All right. But see, that is not something to be done lightly. And when people do that against the saints, there is a consequence. There is a consequence. And some people will reap heavy consequences for doing it wrongly about something that they don't understand. Because they're following a man and putting on the um, adornments of their leader and try to ingratiate themselves into a specific demographic. Or, I should say, denomination. Okay? That's not something to be taken lightly. Because you've got to remember, you know, I, I, I'm going to give an account for everything I've ever said to you. That scares me. That's why when uh, I'm made aware that I've made an error, I, I, you know, fess up publicly to it. But see, again, there again, I leave the evidence of the error for you to see because you need to remember. I'm just a man. I'm just a man. I'm a man who's a saint, a safe person. And we are to lead as examples, brother. But a man who is strong in the Lord doesn't hide his frailties, his faults, his mistakes. You don't air your dirty laundry to public because some of these whack jobs will take that and just beat you over the head with it. Okay? But there is a level of transparency that ought to be there. Okay? But in Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 4 unto verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 4 unto verse 11. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with them, and speak with my words unto them. My words. My words. Oh, so many of these Christians will get neck deep into their own philosophies, okay, and their own interpretations with lightly using scripture. I've had people um, email me before. It's like, you, you, you're just uh, throwing scripture at people. You're speak, all you're doing is speaking scripture. Y yeah, right, brother? Sister, it's like, 
Yeah, that's the point. But see, what, what kind of mentality says that? Someone who wants a shot in the arm, wants something to make them feel good, to hear smooth things. Hmm? When a hammer smootheth out iron. Let's continue. For thou art not sent to a people of strange speech and an, of an unhard language, but to the house of Israel, God's chosen people. God's chosen people. Not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. I, I love this. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. I mean, you read about, in the book of Acts, you know, the Ethiopian eunuch, okay? When the gospel officially went to the Gentile in order to make the Jew jealous, uh, you know, it was like, wow! We're, <laughs> okay? But those who were the apple of the eye. Now, orchestrate that in the guise of Christianity. Think about that. Think about that. You try to talk to a Christian who saved because they just believe. Okay? All right. Or whatever flavor of nonsensical doctrine that Christianity has fallen for. And it's like you, you try to tell them through the scriptures, uh, with my words, it's like, well, that, you know, the King James Version added words. You know, the King James Version called the Holy Ghost it. And what's end behind that? That's a Trinitarian statement. Because the Trinitarians believe one God and woohoo, uh, three persons. Okay? There's, there's no... Um, fault. There's nothing wrong with referring to the Holy Ghost as an it. A Trinitarian diluted by a Roman Catholic, yea hath God said, textual criticism are the ones that bring that up. Okay? Alright? See, what happens is Christians get educated but they don't learn who Christ is. There's a difference. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Christianity. You know. You know, like I said, you try to witness to a Christian. Did you hear what I said? Witnessing to a Christian. Uh, people. You got to understand, um, the threat is not usually from without, but with those who claim to be within. That is why Christianity is such a laughing stock as it is, because of the things that come from within, from these devils that infiltrate and then plant little seeds to divert people away from the truth. Behold, I have made thy... And brother, behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not. Neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Don't be afraid. Don't fret. Man, dude, don't fret, man. Don't fret. Don't fret. I, I don't fret, man. I, I, I really don't. I, I, I don't care how big or ugly or you are or how many people you are. I don't fret, man. I don't. Neither should you. Okay? It's like, well, Brad, yeah, what happens when... I've had a gun put in my face before. Which is a stupid thing to do because when you have a, a gun held at someone's face like that, yeah, you could pull the hair trigger, but a slight like that, it's a stupid thing to do. Remember, the distance 
it helps you with a handgun. You know, if I'm at rabbit trail, if I'm within two feet of an attacker who's coming to the house, he's got the advantage, I got the disadvantage. Okay? That's why you want distance. All right? Keep that in mind. Brother, keep that in mind. Okay? When you hear someone coming in through the window and you're about 18, 10 feet away or something like that, boom! <laughs> Drop them. Okay, don't get, because remember, the closer you are the, uh, with a handgun, especially a rifle, especially a rifle too. I mean, within five foot with a rifle, the guy who doesn't have anything has the advantage. Okay, <laughs> all right. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. But the, the point is, sorry for that rabbit trail, the point is, don't fear them that all they can do is kill the body, but after that, they can do nothing to you. They can't kill your soul. The Jesuits will try. The Jesuits will kill you, then they'll go after your mother, your father, your sister, your aunt, and fluffy your little poodle. Okay? <laughs> yes, they will. But see, they can't kill the soul. Only God is able, not Cain, able to kill the soul. It doesn't say that he does, by the way, for you wicked uh, soul annihilationists. Okay? All right? We have the Lord within us. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So you needn't fear these things. No, that's not easy for me to say, but see, you got to remember. I get out there sometimes. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears. And go, get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God. Whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. Look at uh, chapter 2, verse 7. In Ezekiel, chapter 2, verse 7. And thou shalt speak my words unto them. Whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. For they are most rebellious. And, and you know, that's, that's one of the things that has always kind of was like, wow. You know, I've got, I have been accused on many occasions. Like, all you're doing is reading scripture. Yeah. Yeah, your point is. <laughs> like, all you're doing is reading scripture. You, you, you know, you, 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 you use scripture for everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, uh, that, that, uh, that, that's the point there, sizzle chest, okay, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 17 on verse 21 in Ezekiel chapter 3, now, when was Ezekiel written? Who was it written to? It was written to the Hebraic Jews under the law. The law was faith and works. Eternal security as it is today was not available under the law. Different dispensation. Okay? Keep that in mind. People, Saints, we know this. The way you are made right today is not the way one was made right under the law, despite what some of these stupid Christians want you to believe. Okay? They're the ones lying to you. And the truth of rightly dividing the word of truth to you Christians sounds crazy because it doesn't get taught. So I say that. 17 under 21 in Ezekiel chapter 3. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning for me. 
from me, excuse me, from me. Give them warning from me. You and I are ambassadors of Christ. Okay? We're all in the ministry of reconciliation, and we have the word of reconciliation. Okay? This does not change within the dispensation. What? Verse 4 in chapter 3 of Ezekiel. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. That does not change. That crosses dispensational lines. Okay? All right? You understand? But see, one too many of these Christians will introduce philosophy. Vain to see. Man's wisdom. Man's words. Again, there's nothing wrong with the vocabulary. Okay? Nothing wrong with it. But see, like I told you, a lot of these guys are doing that to replace something that isn't there in the first place. Okay? But in the book of Jude, in the book of Jude, okay, where it says in, okay, in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of my mouth, at my mouth, and give them warning from me. Jude Verses uh, 22 and 23, and some have compassion, and of some have compassion, making a difference. Someone's already broken, and the Lord opens a door for you to speak the truth of the gospel unto them. Compassion. Others save with fear. If you don't repent of your self righteousness and get right with the Lord, and He save you, you going to hell. And you just believe and receive can go to hell with you. Okay? Putting them out, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And of course, of course, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Okay? Back to Ezekiel, verse 18. Dispensational difference. Pay attention. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked of his way, to save his life, the same wicked man, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Dispensational difference. Keep reading. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Delivered thy soul is key to understanding the implications here. Okay? Instruction and righteousness. Okay, the Lord opens up an opportunity and you choose not to, to be used of the Lord because remember, He doesn't force you to do anything. Uh, that moment gets passed. It's not, um, uh, it doesn't become an issue of your salvation. Verse 19 tells you that if, under the law, if you didn't warn the guy and he went on and died, number one, his blood was on your hands it would be a mark against your soul. And also remember that under the law there was no eternal security to begin with. So, but thou hast delivered thy soul dispensational difference. Um, some King James Bible-believing Christians, such as the Stephen Anderson type people, okay, they will go to this to try, you got their blood on your hands. Meaning that your salvation is in danger. Well, they're like they're like eternal security, but yet they'll come to this to try to scare you, thinking that your soul is in danger because you didn't witness. That's not how it is for today. You could prove that, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Remember, under the law, eternal security was not there. Today, we have eternal security. Okay. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. 
because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin. And his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Different dispensation. Okay? There have been times when I've been, when the Lord clearly gave an opportunity. And I didn't take it. I didn't, I wasn't obedient unto his. It's like, I, I, I designed, I did this so, you know, this situation, here you are, there they are. You didn't take it. You blow it. And that, I understand you get fearful. I understand your reservations. Um, do you trust the Lord or not? Do you trust the Lord? You don't think the Lord can like jog your head to recall something? Make sure you have a sword on you. Huh? So, remember, dear brother, dear sister, in a moment when you and you know a saint knows whether before during or after and when it's after and you've blown it I spare you that's a crushing feeling that you cannot soon get away from and I spare you I spare you but see under the law there was a salvific connotation to it Verse 21. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that he that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. Delivered thy soul in verse 21 and 19 show you that it is dispensational specific. Use for instruction in righteousness, yes. You know, if you forego an opportunity that the Lord orchestrates, um, sooner or later, common rational sense would say that those opportunities might dwindle. Here's something for some of you to consider. Have opportunities not been coming because the opportunities that you gave you were too concerned with yourself. I love you. I love you. I love you. Think about that. Think about that. Concerned with yourself. I I, I don't know enough. I, I I can't. I can't remember. I what if I what if I stutter? What if I I I me me me? Well, Brad, that's easy for you to say. It. I, I I get my senses exercised by reason of use. Okay. Yes, but. Believe me. Believe me. You forgo a moment that the Lord clearly it's like I gave that to you. Not for anything special that we are, but where you are, there is the Lord because he dwells within you. See, that's how that works. That doesn't mean that you're a little God. Okay? But you know, and in that situation amongst tons of Christians and and here you are a saint and the Lord's like, talk to that guy, talk to that, or talk to that woman, or talk to that group of kids. Okay? Yeah, you can get intimidated, but see, are, are you fretting, man? One, two, three. Are you fretting, man? And, okay, simplest way, do it. So what? Do you, do you really care how you look? Or do you care how the Lord looks? That's one of the ways some of you will justify it. Well, I don't want to make a, a fool of the Lord. Didn't Paul say we are fools for Christ's sake? Who's going to call us a fool? Those who are wise in their own eyes professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Don't, don't. See, some of you can defeat yourself before you even leave the door. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33. 
Ezekiel 33. And see, okay, there's a time and a place for everything. And the Lord is the one who orchestrates that time and place. But he doesn't force us to speak. Okay? Got to remember that. That's why today in this dispensation, you can have been given 20 chances. And because I don't know this, I'm a blah, 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 blah. And they pass you by and then they start dwindling and dwindling and dwindling. Something to think about. But Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 2 and verse 6. Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Again, dispensational difference. Under the law, there was no eternal security. So deliver his soul. Yes, today, it's not like that. The Lord dwells within the saved saint. Your soul is in his hands today. Okay, that's how that works. That's rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, I heard, I've heard uh, Baptists, Pentecostals, uh, non-denominationals, uh, King James Bible and Christians take these verses to try to push you into something, thinking that oh, deliver his own soul. Maybe also within context, and I've heard this with the unpardonable sin. He heard the sound of the trumpet, verse 5, and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. At the watchman's hand. Now that, under the law, what a responsibility, huh? If you didn't speak up, there were, uh, there were significant salvific implications there. That's not the case today. Okay? You could be a useless, lazy slug of a saint and still go to heaven. But there again, there again, the Lord's going to be ashamed of you for all eternity. A saved person, spiritual and body. I have not met one genuine saint who's okay with that. Okay, a, a saint's like if I have fruit, I have fruit. Okay. A saint does well. Hey, at least I'll be in heaven. That's not the mindset of a saint. Ones the people who I. Know and believe to be true saints, that's not, that's not even, that doesn't even register. At least I'll be in heaven. See, that points to someone who is all about, I, 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 me, me, me. See, you gotta, you, you really gotta watch it. With the excuses and the reasons you can come up with to defeat yourself and not trust the Lord who dwells within you to do the work that he has called you to do. There's a time and a place for everything. John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verse 7 on to verse 13. <laughs> Boot the door, huh? What an idiot. Then said Jesus unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door. I am the door of the sheep. 
All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And he shall go in to the body of Christ and out at the redemption of the purchased possession and find pasture. That's a reference onto the redemption of the purchased possession for the death, burial, and resurrection by our Lord Jesus Christ right there. The thief. What is the thief? Well, look at verse 2. Oh, no, excuse me. Oh, look at verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Anything that is not of Jesus Christ is a thief and a robber. Christianity is a thief and a robber. It is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Why is Christianity so divided? Have you ever have you ever wondered that? Flesh gets involved, yes. Yes, okay, yes, absolutely. But um, why is it so divided? Because they're thieves and robbers going up some other way. Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal joy, hope, faith. And to kill and to destroy. Like these uh, guys who all they do is attack people. All they do. And rarely, if ever, give the true connotation by his words to counteract the poison that they claim they are exposing. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. A lot of the, these people don't care for the sheep. They don't care for the people. They're only concerned about themselves, their own, um, their own ministry, or their own live stream, or they're promoting their own whatever, okay, or how they look, all right? They don't care genuinely. A majority of them don't care genuinely about the sheep. No, it's all, it's all a, a show. It's all theater to them. Okay? All right? Acts 20. Acts 20, verses 28 on to verse 32. Acts 20, verses 28 on to verse 32. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. See, when you are reluctant or rebel or refuse to go as the Lord would have you to go, um, you might be afraid, you might be whatever, whatever. What's, what's the center of that fear of yours? Hmm? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. 
Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. There it is. There it is. They want to be in the limelight. They want to be the popular one. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now brethren, I commend you to God. Where are you sending them? Where are you sending them? I commend them to God through the scriptures. Not to me, but scriptures unto the Lord Jesus Christ. You used to read scriptures. All you're doing is reading scripture. Guilty as charged. Yep, you're right. Guilty as charged, pal. Guilty as charged. You're right. Thank you. Thank you very little. Because you meant it as a dig, but it, yeah. Yeah. That's what a saint does. Might want to become one. Figure and see for yourself. Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And give you inheritance among all them which are sanctified. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 7 on to verse 9. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? He looks the part. Got the same little cowboy hat. Similar glasses, wearing the same clothes, comes out of the same uh, uh, ambiance and same um, atmosphere and background, has the same mannerisms, has the same vocal inflection, even sways the same, and has the same pauses. If any man trust to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ's. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. That I may that I may not seem as if it if, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. This is very significant because Paul is like look at verse eight. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, we are to first, brethren, build up. The exposing is not the primary. Even Jude, even Jude, hold your place. Go to Jude. Jude gives a reference onto this. Okay? Even Jude. Okay? First, feed the flock of God. First, edify, build up. But see, with a lot of these guys, it's first attack. Expose, expose, attack. And hey, there's, there's a lot out there to do that with. Absolutely. But see, like the guy from New York. You know, Exposing heretics is a great ministry. <laughs> you, you don't have a ministry, pal. <laughs> you're, you're a Jesuit. <laughs> I believe you're a Jesuit myself. I actually do. I really do. Yeah. Saved in the Catholic Church, huh? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Jude, verse 3 and 4. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you 
of the common salvation, common to uh, meaning available to all. Okay? It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. See how that begins? What's What comes first? Okay, exhort. There's a time and a place for everything. For there are then, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, just believe and receive, fake grace, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, the it's backwards with these devil coadjutors because all they do is attack. It's attack. Attack. This is a time and a place for everything. Okay? I have been called to uh, expose people before. Yes, I have. I don't take that lightly. And contrary to what many of you want to believe, I don't enjoy it. I don't. Okay? I don't. But that that's part of it. There's a, there is a time and a place for everything. And see, another reason why I really don't like doing that is because there are those out there. You've heard me say, uh, like uh, I mentioned so-and-so, and I say, if you've never heard of them, good. Leave it that way. But see, there are those out there who will bring up certain things that you're like, what is that? And then what happens? That, you know, that mentality of, you know, uh, the red button mentality. It's like, whatever you do, don't touch the red button. What does your flesh want to do? You want to touch the red button. Some of these guys will bring out these incredibly complex, will bring them up uh, in like passing conversation and uh, use these fancy high-tech words. And what, but see, the opposite is being employed by them. They put them there to divert you. It's like, well, what's that? And then you waste your time looking at something while leaving the truth behind. Does that make sense? See, this is one of the subtle things that these guys who all they do is attack people. This is one of the subtle tactics that they employ. Okay? I, 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 there is, I, uh, words I can't even pronounce by certain people that will bring up these things. And it's like, what the heck is that? What are you talking about? I go and look at it. It's like, oh, wow. But now think about that. I went and looked at it. What happens to somebody who's a mere Christian, right? Who doesn't read the Word of God, who's led away with philosophy, and then they hear this guy talking about what this is, and that guy doesn't even give a scriptural rebuttal of what he's bringing up. Aha! guy from England specifically and see I'm not naming his name because you know brother you sent me that one video about he's been exposed no that that idiot he's just gonna that's just gonna get him off he's he loves it that's one of the ways you fight them the false want the notoriety the false wants you to name them I believe it was a good old Frankie boy. I believe it was him. If I'm wrong, hey, I'm wrong. But one of them said of me once, and I believe it was him. It's like, Brad, we all know who you're talking about. Name him. No. For exactly that reason. There, there is a time and a place for everything. Absolutely. There is a time and a place where you have to name someone. Yes. Yes. But I like I've mentioned several times, come here. Um, it's really funny, especially when it comes to the steel of the Jesuit poniard. It's really funny that personally, um, when I have done things and spoke about people and not naming them, they, they always figure it out that I'm talking about them. <laughs> you know, it's like the the, uh, the Jesuits on YouTube here. You know, they I I, I, I did. I, I've talked about this before. It's like I purposely used ambiguous language when the Jesuit Ponzi quasi scheme, these, you know, um, 
uh, Poison Crown uh, psychological operation was going on because they were zapping people for just making mention using certain words. I purposely spake in an ambiguous type of language while the viewer clearly understood exactly what I was saying even though I didn't name it. I did that during that whole time of the Poison Crown. You look that up in Latin, you'll know what I'm saying. See? See? Okay? Yet they know what I'm saying. Yet I know what I'm... Yet they know what I'm saying. Hmm. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? But again, some of these devils, a lot of them, will bring to light a certain teaching, certain doctrine, something that you've never heard of, and it will spark your curiosity. See, they bring it about not to truly expose it, but to introduce it to you to distract you. That's why you got to watch out with a lot of these free gracer idiots and these other live streaming guys who all they do is attack people. Okay? Or they, they're whores and debate and do all these other things with other people. They will do that. It's like a guy claiming to be a Christian and then he brings up like, you know, another blend of Christianity like a Presbyterian or a Calvinist and they'll bring them together. Is it to expose or to introduce to you heresy? See? And see, that's a fine line there. It's a fine line. If someone isn't giving you the words of the Lord to refute such stuff, chances are they're bringing it up to introduce it to you to distract you. Okay? All right. Now, look at verse 4 and 5 in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. What are these strongholds? Casting down imaginations. Imaginations. Save yourself by your own belief. Perfect example. One God and three persons. Saved people are going to be going through the great tribulation, as they call it. It's actually the time of Jacob's trouble. They were saved by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Those are fairy tales sparked about by what? Imagination. Fables. Okay? What is a fable? A figment of imagination. Ah. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Filled. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came, and brethren, when I came to you, came, I came, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. Now, wisdom is used there. What wisdom is Paul talking about? The fear of the Lord or the wisdom that comes from excellency of speech? See, excellent speech, scripture, is one thing. What is he referring to? Referring to? Those with who use these impressive vocabularies, there's nothing wrong with that, but use that as a means to replace something that isn't there. They try to convince you that they have God in them by using these excellent speeches. Okay? Prove it to you. Absolutely. Verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I am crucified on the world, yet I live, yet not I, 
but Christ lived within me. What am I quoting? Galatians chapter 2. See, Paul saying, I am, I, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ with him, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. What is he saying? Who's saved? Okay? Galatians 2, 21 to verse 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, when he says, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Who, who's saved? Who's saved? I am crucified with Christ. Galatians 2, 20 and 21. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And see, so many Christians will take on to them this rhetoric, this dialectic of fancy language to give off the impression that it is God speaketh, speaking through them. When it is the little G God of this world, yes. Okay, but see, simple. Let's keep reading. And I was with, in, uh, verse 3, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3, let's continue. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, like philosophy and vain deceit, but in demonstration of the Spirit, capital S, and of power. And this right here, verse 5, is where Christianity stands. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The wisdom of men. These live streaming Christians. I could name many of them, but I'm not going to. That's what they want. And they will bring about these complex Heresies, like it's like what? And what? And what is that? And someone who isn't being brought up in nurture and admonition of the Lord, who doesn't search the Scriptures daily, whether these things be so, who who save themselves by their own belief, they'll hear these things and get diverted even further. See, brother, that, that's what that one idiot didn't bring up. He, he just, he brought, I'm speaking to a, a specific, specific beloved brother. Um, that video link that you sent me, uh, it was okay, but he, there were, that was just surface stuff. He didn't get down into anything deep. Okay, he didn't. But see, verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with using a vocabulary. There's nothing wrong with that. But see, again, people, you gotta be aware. Okay? This is the one thing that Ruckman, don't get me started, Ruckman was gruff and spoke plainly. Okay? I don't think Ruckman was a safe man. That, that, leave it alone. What, okay, that, whatever. But the way he spake was gruff, very gruff. He spake simply. When Ruckman said something, you understood what he was saying. Here's a name that I can mention. Art Katz, a heretic Pentecostal. You needed a dictionary just to hear him speak. Well, what's wrong with that? Uh, we've covered this all this week. Paul, it's like, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that you would be edified. Well, these other people are glazing you over. Look at how smart I am. Look at how godly I am. I'm using all these complex things. Like I said, again, there is nothing wrong in and of itself using a, a more technical of, a vocabulary. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay? But see, when one depends on that, when one shoves that into your face and bases everything they do upon that, it's a cover. For something that isn't there. Be aware of that. And you know, I, you know, these people who hear these things, they're like glazed over. And they get the interpretation that it's like, okay, 
that guy is godly because listen to him. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to him. Check me out when I speak. Check, check it out with the scripture. Okay, I don't tell you to follow me along because it sounds good. I mean it. I make mistakes. See it for yourself. What about these other guys? Huh? See, the subtleness of these people nowadays, brethren. It's actually a little too subtle for most to even be aware of it. Verses 12 on to verse 16 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, which is that spirit of Antichrist, but the spirit which is of God, that's a lowercase s, one that is imparted, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God himself. Freely given to us, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, our God, our Savior, the Holy Ghost is that Spirit, given to us. Okay? Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. It's, it's, it's amusing listening to these Christian debate channel guys uh, when they start throwing around these words. It's, it's just it's like you sit there, it's like, <laughs> wow, wow, give me some popcorn, you know. It, it's really amusing. A in front of muse means not to think. It really is. It's, you know, and that's, that's the point. It's amusement, brethren, people. It's amusement. How many of you who, the Christians who like listen to John MacArthur, how many of you actually think about what he's saying? Oh, you do, but he's a Calvinist. He's written his own version of the Bible, people, that ought to scare you. <laughs> he did. He, he wrote the LSD version. Okay, his own version of the Bible. The Bible. Notice I said that. I'm, I'm always about distinction. Scripture. Okay? But the Bible. He wrote his own Bible. Kind of like Eugene Peterson did. There are several others that did that. He is his own God. Buried in spiritual things with spiritual, huh? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Capital S. For they are foolishness unto him, because he neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And here the heretics hate this one. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Why? Because the Lord judges us through the scriptures. Hence we judge ourselves through the scriptures, hence we judge you. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? We have the mind of Christ. Okay? And look at verses 12 and 13 again. Okay? Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things we also speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost, Ghost teacheth, Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Matthew chapter 10. Before the death, burial, and resurrection. But a kind of a... He was talking about things that were to come. But also, it's applicable with the Old Testament. Because before Christ died, buried, and rose again, the third day according to the scriptures, and shed his blood on the cross, it was under the law. Okay? There was no three-year lull where the law was... Dis uh, suspended. Uh, the law and the prophets were until John. Uh, yes, but see, still you got to understand he hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Other people were offering sacrifices at that time. Okay? 
there are certain people out there, I'm not going to say who, who believe that one of the dispensations was the three-year ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. I vehemently disagree with that because even though that three-year ministry, the law was still binding because he hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? All right? But never mind about that. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 on to verse 20. Behold, I send you forth the sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. What does that mean? What does that mean, wise as serpents? So we're supposed to know all these things of the devil. Well, uh, what is that? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 verse, verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay? Hence, the line there. Ignorant of Satan's devices. It's one thing when you have as you're in, like you're in a position like this brother and the Lord makes you aware of something that you see is being implemented amongst Christians and killing them it's like okay we're not ignorant of Satan's devices so uh, in this position you're called to make people not ignorant of a certain device of Satan but see like I said there are those who work for Satan that are introducing these things to lead people astray. And you can usually tell these people that they're doing that because they don't give the antidote. They don't give the rebuttal themselves to a scripture. But instead, they use philosophy and vain deceit and man's wisdom. Okay? That's, that's a surefire way. That's a surefire way that you can spot one. Okay? Be, but beware of men. Back in Matthew 10. For they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in the synagogue, in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the capitalist spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. The Lord moves you to speak with my words. And see, like I said, that crosses dispensational lines. For the death, burial, and resurrection, the law was still binding. Eternal security wasn't there. The Lord could dwell in someone absolutely under the law, absolutely, but not on a permanent basis as today. Okay? Once the Lord seals you today, no matter what you do, you cannot become unsealed. Once saved, always saved. That wasn't there under the law, people. And watch out for heretics who say that it was. Because then what do you do with Ezekiel? Well, you saved your own soul. I thought our, the Lord saved our soul. What do you do with that? Okay? All right? And now Romans chapter 16, verses 17 on to verse 20. Romans chapter 16, verses 17 on to verse 20. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses Contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Now, being in this position, sometimes you... I've had to watch people and videos that I couldn't stomach. Eric Lionheart. Roma Army. Stupidhead Christy Burke. And uh, uh, Mark the Messenger. Uh, Bible is Mark of Beast. <laughs> okay. Scott. Scott. Okay. These, these, these are devils. These are liars, deceivers. But in order to warn you out of things that was made aware onto me, such as Mark the Messenger, teaching that you got to keep the law. Deceiving his own people. 
deceiving his own people, the Hermetic people, deceiving his own by saying, you're special because of your skin color. A veiled form of Calvinism. You're elect because of your skin color, but yet you got to keep the law. He, he's, he's a devil, deceiving people, and even worse, doing to his own kindred, his own people. Hey, look at MacArthur. He's a Japhethite. Look what he's done to Japheth. Look what Paul Washer has done to Japheth. Okay? Look at what these easy believers people and you know Japheth are doing to Japheth remember friends Rome is the Babylon Babylonian religion but Rome itself is Japheth Rome is Japheth Rome is Japhethian it's the blending of the Hermetic Babylon religion perfected in Egypt Hermetic crafted and perf perfected in Rome Japheth go go wrap that one around your head okay and while the Shemites they got their uh, Tao Te Chins or their uh, Taoism which is the Tao Te Ching okay and their Buddhism and stuff like that okay For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Well, that guy sounds like he's educated, so he must be speaking the truth. <laughs> give, give me someone who stumbles and mumbles, who, who can't pronounce a word right, even though that irritates some people. But I would rather listen to someone like that than someone who, you know, you need a dictionary with every other, other sentence and you get lost in what's being said because he's trying to dazzle you with his good words and fair speeches. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. If it's contrary to the scripture, rightly divided, it's evil. Why rightly divided? Uh, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. That's the problem with Christianity. They don't rightly divide the word of truth. Hence, all this nonsensical, heretical garbage is being spewed out and people are falling for it. But wise unto that which is good and simple concerning is uh, concerning evil. It might sound good, but search the scriptures, is it? Is it? See, most people are too willing to believe someone because they are wise because someone's got a piece of paper on their wall or they're using this impeccable vocabulary it's like oh wow this guy you know the, 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 the one idiot from England does that he comes even though he had some humor okay and he's funny okay uh, but I mean the I mean again with these live streaming guys okay they they do that to deceive you Look at me because I sound all high tech, technical, and all this stuff. That must mean I'm a, I, I'm saying no. Usually, it's the opposite. First Corinthians fourteen verse twenty, just one verse. Brethren, be not children in understanding, departing from evil. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding, departing from evil, be men. But also context here, you know, understanding, okay? Made mention of this, verse 19. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by 
that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. And with some of these guys and the language and rhetoric that they employ, it's, it's like, what are you even talking about? That's Jesuit, by the way. That's Jesuit. Okay? That, that's, that's Jesuit. And of course, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. See, here's the thing. The devil wants to keep you in one place, dependent on him. That's why Rome, it's like, read the Bible, but don't read it too much because you'll get into heresy. You got to go to your Jesuit priest, or excuse me, or your Jesuit pastor in your church building to understand what is being said. Okay? The devil wants to keep you dependent on him. The Lord, we are to be dependent upon him. But see, something has, we are to grow, people. We are to grow. We are to grow. And, but see, the enemy offers a growth to you, which is a fungus. And I like fungus, right? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I said that for myself. But 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And see, Satan, through all his ministers, wanted to keep you in this spiritual infancy that you will be believe every slight of doctrine, or every wind of doctrine by the slight of man. That you're here one minute and there the next, which we addressed on uh, Wednesday's video. Okay? And also, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 3, this thing about growth again. People, the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ don't want you to grow. They want to stunt your growth and keep you here. All right? They want you to be dependent on them. It's a sham. It's a performance. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 3. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speakings, which, which is profanity, but also evil speaking, contrary to salvation that is today, by His grace, through our faith. Okay? As newborn babes, Desire the sincere milk of the word. Speak my words unto them, not the words of man's wisdom or philosophy, which most people do. And if you got a Bible, not the scriptures, is of the word in there? As newborn babes, Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. That, you, that ye may grow thereby. One second. I want to see something. New American Standard. <laughs> MacArthur's thing. Uh, what is that verse? Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. I want to see something. I want to see something. 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 2. Oh, okay. That and here in the New American Standard, they have it. Like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Hmm. Hmm. There are uh, 
translations of the Bible out there that take out of the word. New American Standard has it. That means it's good, right? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> like I said, I just wanted to see that. You know, spur of the moment thing. But see, again, getting back on point, the devils want to keep you in a spiritual infancy. We are to grow, people. We are to grow. But what happens? What happens? Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, 4 and 5. Galatians chapter 2, 4 and 5. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. False brethren come in unawares. You don't know it at first. Why? Because they look the part. They sound the part. But when you start searching the scriptures. Hmm? Hmm? Okay? And 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 3. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Something that nobody has ever heard about, but yet bringing it into the forefront. Why? To warn you or to deceive you? To distract you? I think the latter. That these guys will bring up these topics and use these big... It's like, what is that? What are you talking about? And then you look at it and there's a simpler way to say it. But see, they go for the... It's like with, the, with, the, with Bible translations. They prefer the harder rendering. That's true. And y'all, you all it's like, well, I can't understand the King James Version. It's like, yes, you can. You just don't want to understand it. When the Bibles are more harder to understand than... Yea, hath God said, right? Yea, hath God said? Yea, hath God said? Huh? God hath said. Simple. See, the authorized version is a lot more simpler than you people want it to be. That's why you don't like it. And the Bibles that come from Rome are purposely using more complex, harder language. But they will bring in damnable heresies. Things that you didn't even know of. Things you didn't even know exist. Why? I think to divert you. To interject. I mean, there's, there's a guy over there who's, who's bringing up things that it's like, what are you talking about? What is... It's like, oh, okay, cursed, cursed prayer, uh, praying a curse on someone, and they use this, another word. Why didn't? Why can't you just kept kept it simple? They got a facade to keep up. They got an appearance to keep up. Look at me, I'm intelligent. I'm a saved man. I'm a Christian. Okay, because look at me, I can I sound the part, right? Remember, it was the Pharisees who gave the Lord over to Rome to be crucified. And the Pharisees knew all, had all the fancy rhetoric, they had all the fancy linguistics, but for all that, they didn't really know the Lord. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness. Shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Buy your t-shirts or your coffee cups or your backpacks. The, the term was witness wear, 
and I, and I got a few of them. I, I do, I do, I, you know, I do. Uh, but am I the only one who has a problem with a Christian selling T-shirts to you with their ministries on it? Well, it's a thing of witness. It's a thing of self-glorification and covetousness. Hey, 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 look. I, yeah, you see me, the Lord's Gym t-shirt I have. I have one of those Team Jesus t-shirts. Yes, I do. I have the, the crucifix with the syringe on it. Jesus is my vaccine. I have those. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Am I selling them to you? There, 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 there's just... Next thing you know, you got your ministry coffee cup, your ministry backpack. You know, Ken Helvin did that, you know, Ken Helvin Ministries or whatever it was. And there are other people out there who are doing that too. It's just like, and I've been told about it. It's like, are you out of your mind? Charlatans, man. Charlatans. Okay, look that up. All right. All right. All right. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 13. We're almost done. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Verses 6 on to verse 11. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. And see, this is what a lot of these Christians, especially the ones who all they do is attack, are doing by introducing these things that you've never heard of. Okay? It's like, well, it's one, okay. If the need arises, there's a time and place for everything. Okay? In the moment, if you come across a brother or a sister or one, it's like, hey, you know, that's happened to me before. It's like, hey, Brother Brad, have you heard of this? It's like, what? what? It's like, oh, and they give it to me, and it's like, okay, I don't look into it. It's like, oh, okay. It works like that. But when they're just purposely interjecting these things out of nowhere, why are they doing that? They want to lead you astray to go uh, to get sidetracked and look into other gods, which are no gods. It's deception. It's deceit. All the while, we're putting on a happy face with civility. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Oh, excuse me, I skipped a verse. Verse 7. Namely, of the gods of the people which are around about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. And now, and now why aren't we doing that today? Vengeance is his. Vengeance belongs unto the Lord. This was under the law, a different dispensation. Okay? We don't do that today. We do not do that today. But what we do is we put them away. We mortify. Okay? Get out of here. Get away from me with that. Okay? I don't need to know about it. If I do need to know about it, the Lord will make me aware. Why? Because being fed by the sincere milk of the word. Thou shalt stone him with stones that he die. Why? And this is what I believe these guys are doing. These live streaming guys. Okay, these Christians. When they introduce these high, these, these things that I, I can't even pronounce. And it's like, what are you guys talking about? But see, that fleshly curiosity. See? For you to be distracted and to go off onto that. What are they doing? 
because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. Now, in Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 on to verse 32. Ephesians chapter 4. There's a time and a place for everything. And we that are in this position are when situation arise as led by the Lord to warn, okay, not to deceive. There are guys bringing up stuff that I've never even heard of. And when it's like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? It's not to warn people. It's to interject something. So someone might be, what's that? And then get led astray. That's what these people are doing, people. That's the level of the depravity, the sin of the deception. That they will bring in something that nobody's ever heard of. And it's like, what is that? The establishment commandment. It's like, what's that? What's that? Sounds good. That's something that Martin Richling brought in. Okay. Oh, oh you, you guys don't like that I remember about that, huh? Huh? Yeah, Martin Richling, who brought in... He wasn't the person, but he was one of the people that helped to establish this current blend of easy believism that's going on today. Martin Richling was one of them. And I know specifically who um, a few of his disciples are. One from Canada and one from New York. Specifically specifically okay but anyway anyway Ephesians chapter 4 verses 29 on the verse uh, uh, where did you're in Timothy <laughs> verse 32 Ephesians chapter 4 verses 29 on the verse 32 let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth so communication in that context is this that includes profanity but corrupt communication is speaking something contrary to the salvific doctrine that is applicable for today in this dispensation. Okay? But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. See, when someone is only about pointing out this, that, 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 and the other, Where's the edification? It's not there. It's entertainment. It's, it's uh, sowing discord. Okay? That's all it is. We saw an example. Okay? There's a time and a place for everything under heaven. Yes, there is. A time to rebuke. A time to reprove. But it begins with exhortation. Exhortation. With building up. That reproving and rebuking is the secondary to first building up. And yes, you're right. There's a lot that needs to be reproved and rebuked. Amen. But see, when you make that your entire stick, you're serving the God of this world, Satan. You're working for the Vatican. And you're bringing these things in not to warn people, but to disinform them and to distract them away from the truth. With many wabbit trails. And I like wabbit. I love me wabbit. With uh, uh, teriyaki sauce or some Tabasco. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. But see, there comes a time when the rabbit trails got to get back onto the main trail. And see, that's all these guys do. Give you endless. Hey, hey, I mean, anyone who's talked to me, I mean, you've seen it in this video. We'll go on rabbit trails, sure. But you got to always get back on point. And see, the enemy wants to take you away from that point. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Seal. Once saved, always saved. Day of redemption. Catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. The redemption of the purchased possession. Some of you might erroneously refer to it as the pre-tribulation rapture. 
which isn't in scripture, but yet you continue to use the word because people don't know what you're talking about. Well, whose fault is that? Let all bitterness. Oh. Oh, the bitterness in some of these people. Hey, 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 hey. I, 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 I get bitter sometimes myself too. Okay, I do. Okay, I, I do. All right. And wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, context, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Verse 32 is specifically talking about, you know, between brethren. Okay? All right? Unlike what some people will have to have you to believe, you do not have to forgive today in order to be forgiven. Okay? That, that's not for today. That's during the kingdom of heaven uh, where it's all works. Okay? Uh, I know Eric Lyon fart. Uh, he, he brought, he was, he's a proponent. It's like, unless you forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven. Uh, that's a work, Jack. That's for the kingdom of heaven, not for today. Okay. But then again, if you don't forgive someone, you, you're going to, you're going to make a, a wreck out of your life, but you don't have to because there is no self-ethic implications. Okay. All right. And first Timothy chapter five, one verse, verse 20. Them that sin rebuke before all that others may fear. You know, there are a lot of people out there that are way too quick to do an expose video. Okay, and see, there, there is this one stupid little young punk who jumped the gun at the behest of someone else and he paid the penalty for it while the other went on his merry way. Okay, but see, he jumped the gun and spoke about things that he was clueless of, and he paid a heavy price for it. But this is true, okay? Them that sin rebuke before all that others may fear, okay? But see, most of these Christians that I'm talking about, this is the forefront, not the latter, where exhortation. Building up is the forefront, where exposing is the latter. See, they have it backwards. Like Elmer from New York had said before, it's like, exposing heretics is a great ministry. That's all you're about. Where's the, oh, I've made things on doctrine. Uh, yeah, but you don't encompass them with the videos that you're making attacking people. And also you use the big uh, sounding words of man's wisdom as well. Okay? See, the order is wrong. There is a time and a place for everything. Yes. But see, you got to, especially with a lot of these King James Bible believing Christians, they, they, they jump the gun. They make that the forefront. It's like, I got to make another video. Okay? They make that the forefront. They make that the forefront. They make that the priority. There's a time and a place for everything. Yes, there is. Our first thing is to edify the body of Christ. And when the need arrives, when the wolf comes, then you speak as the Lord would guide. But like I said, there's one little punk who, um, who jumped the gun and he, he paid a heavy price for it. And praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. Praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. The Lord really kind of spanked that kid hard. But then again, he, he's a, he's a self-righteous little twit himself. And he, he, he's, you know, he, he's, he thinks he's self-righteous. Never mind. Never mind. But see, the order is wrong with these people. Okay? Like I've said to you uh, recently, I've, I've you, know, you know, understood that it's like, you know, I could be distracted by Getting on Christianity, well, I've done that this whole week. Okay, but see, what what have we been doing? We've been going through the scriptures. <laughs> you, you, you used to, I, it's like, dude, and that's a bad thing to use too much scripture. 
That's a bad thing, huh? Yeah, what God do you serve? <laughs> and I am. It's like, you're just reading the script. <laughs> it's like, truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Uh, it's like, uh, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> like, you're right. Thank you. Thank you. And if it's too much for you, there's a lot of guys out there who just have little, you know, morsels and not give anything to you meaty. Go ahead. Okay? Go ahead. All right. But see, when when the order is out of whack, where they put the the priority on always pointing the finger at someone else, what 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 is it that they are actually seeking? Jeremiah chapter 23, just one verse, sums it up very nicely. And this is resident in all these devils that I'm talking about. One from Canada, one from England, the guys here in America that do this. Okay? This is all they're about. Jeremiah 23, verse 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. They ran. They want to run to the front. They want everyone to look at them. They want to be the center of attention. They want to draw disciples after them. And see, it's not done in the best interest of the body of Christ, but rather, but rather, for their best interest, because they run to the forefront. A saint doesn't run to the forefront. The saint is like, get out there, you know? <laughs> That's the saint. That's the saint. The saint is like dragging. The saint drags. It's like, I don't want it. I don't want it. Okay, fine, don't. Yes, okay, I will, I will, Lord, I will. <laughs> you know? But see, the saint, you know, because the saint knows that we're going to give, uh, we, we're going to give an account for everything we say. And you devils who know this don't care. Why? Because misery loves company. That's why with some of you guys who I have gone at very hard, it's like, I pity you. Because, dude, you are you aware of the consequences of you teaching that it's not your faith? Are you aware of how what danger you're going to be in when you stand before the Lord at the great white throne of judgment? And not the judgment seat of Christ. But like it says in Romans chapter 1. What is it with these people? See, they get their little clicks. They get their little clicks together and they slap each other on the back. Yeah. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have the pleasure in the, have pleasure in them that do them. Misery loves company. Deuteronomy 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Verses 30 and 31. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. And them who? These people who are not saints. Who seek to impress you and dazzle you with a, with a, with a vocabulary. And all they do is attack and entertain you and don't exhort you. And bring up things that you've never heard of in order to deceive and distract you. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that day be destroyed from before thee. And that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. 
little g. They are of their father of the devil. For every, even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. Deuteronomy 32, verses 15 on to verse 17. Jeshua. See, a lot of Christian, a lot of Christianity, they, 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 they think there's something. They really do. And when you start thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to think, especially, especially you guys, you free grace people. But Jeshurun, which means highly favored, waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the cattle are rock of his salvation. Now, well, when you save yourself, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. And what these guys do, like I'm talking, like I was talking to you about. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to new gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up from out of nowhere. What are you talking about? Why are they doing that? To get you away from the Lord. Whom your fathers feared not. It's going to be it for this little video. Later than normal. Uh, I know, but um, it is what it is. People, you really got to be careful to what you're listening to, what you're watching, okay? You don't need to, you need to be wise concerning good and simple concerning evil. Got to rightly divide the word of truth. See, without that, that is the catalyst for a majority of the heresy that's out there today that a lot of you Christians are falling for. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, thank you for your prayers. Thank you. We love you. Lord willing, we will see you in the next video.